So <clears throat> I realize I'm probably using this term inaccurately, food, uh, addiction, in terms of using it with food. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not using this as a mental health uh, professional. I'm not a mental health professional. This sounds sort of like I'm getting ready to get into an emotional um, story. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, when diet is the most important determinant of health, um, it helps to talk about uh, and understand the, the place that we come from emotionally in terms of health. So, yeah, there's going to be some, uh, some rant here. I come from a very bad um, uh, conversation and perspective in terms of food, and I'm just going to share a little bit of that. But first of all, let's talk a little bit about uh, addiction, what the, what the professionals say uh, addiction is. This is the American Psychiatric Asso Association. Addiction is a complex condition, a brain disease that is manifested by compulsive substance use despite harmful consequence. People with addiction, severe substance use disorder, have an intense focus on using a certain substance or substances such as alcohol or drugs to the point that it takes over their life. They keep using the substance even though they know it will cause problems. Yet a number of effective treatments are available and people can recover from addiction and lead normal, productive lives. He goes on to talk about uh, people with substance abuse disorder have distorted thinking, behavior, and body functions. Changes to the brain's wiring are what cause people to have intense cravings for the drug and make it harder, hard to stop using the drug. Brain imaging studies show changes in the area that, of the brain that relate to judgment, decision-making, learning, memory, and behavior control. These substances can cause harmful changes in the brain functions. The changes can last long after the immediate effects of the drug, the intoxication. The intoxication is the intense pleasure or calm. Uh, increased senses are a high cause of, uh, are a high, or a high caused by the drug. Intoxication symptoms are different for, for each substance. Over time, people with addiction build up a tolerance, meaning they need larger amounts to feel the effects. I mean, uh, again, you hear each of these terms and you think, uh, my reaction is, given where I come from, how is, which part of these is not um, involving, f uh, doesn't fit for food? You could say, well, you don't get a high with food, an immediate or long-lasting high. I'm not sure you could really say that. I mean, you could debate that. Um, tolerance, clearly there's a food tolerance. Clearly, there's a, there's a habit of using it, despite the fact that you know that it's not healthy for you. According to the NIDA, National Institute of Drug Use, people begin taking drugs for a variety of reasons. To feel good, uh, to feel better, for example, to relieve stress, to do better, to improve performance. Um, now, you say, well, that doesn't fit for food. Tell that to your NFL tackle. Lineman. Curiosity and peer pressure. Well, again, peer pressure, tell that to someone who goes out to eat with a group or is at a family uh, reunion buffet. People with addictive orders may be, disorders may be aware of their problem, but unable to stop it, even if they want to. The addiction may cause health problems. Don't tell me that food doesn't fit there. As well as problems with work and family members and friends. Uh, you could say it doesn't fi uh, fit there, but uh, think about it. Has anybody seen the movie Hairspray? Uh, there is uh, significant psychosocial issues and often significant uh, and significant damage caused by uh, being overweight. <clears throat> Not to mention the health uh, the health damage. So symptoms of substance use disorder are grouped into four categories: impaired control, a craving or strong urge. Uh, desire or fail attempts to cut down and control the substance. Uh, again, don't tell me that doesn't apply to food. Social problems. Substance use causes failure to complete major tasks at work, school, or home. Social worker le leisure activities are given up or cut back because of substance abuse. Risky use. Substance use in risky settings. Uh, continued use despite no problems. Drug effects. Tolerance. Well, <clears throat> again, Tolerance for a high, an immediate high, maybe that doesn't fit so well. 
uh, but withdrawal symptoms, I think, does. Uh, many people exper experience both mental illness and addiction. So, again, you could say, hmm, maybe, um, maybe there's uh, something there. Let's talk a little bit more about my family. Um, <clears throat> my dad and I, um, I, I come from, from a family of origin that had some significant challenges around food. Um, my dad was 5'10", my height, and 350 pounds and even more during a large part of his life. Most of the time he was between a BMI of 35 and 40, or, or 40 plus, and um, actually even 50 plus during some time period. 5'10 and 350 pounds is, uh, is um, morbidly obese, 50 plus. My peak, uh, I peaked at, uh, a lot heavier than I am now. My second year in college, I weighed 180 pounds. That's uh, 25.6 BMI, so that's down here on this end of the scale. Our family, one of the problems that we had was we used to go hog wild at, uh, at a buffet. And there were a lot of different uh, versions of buffets and family feasts. Obviously weddings, but also funerals, holidays. Our family really didn't see this kind of, uh, this was a little bit upscale for us. Didn't even have champagne until uh, the kids, myself and the kids, were getting closer to adulthood. At that point, we did start having um, more than one meat available, um, cheeses, champagne, and alcohol. Sweets, desserts were a big, big deal. Uh, the buffet, piling it on, that was where it became a big issue. You see, But again, this is a little bit more upscale. You see this in... Uh, this was obviously a prepared buffet. That was not my family style. We were um, lower middle class South Carolinians. I'll, I'll show what was our style. Well, this was our style. Family reunions where everybody brought potluck. Um, my mother had <coughs> uh, nine or ten sisters and one brother. So I remember going to family reunions where there were over 300 people multiple families and multiple tables like this, table after table after table. They would arrange the entrees in one space, the pastas in one space, the desserts in one space, the drinks in another space. It was a place that uh, we were challenged with going hog wild. I was never a... Uh, pizza and beer was never a major uh, issue for me because I didn't like beer until my 50s when um, craft beers I started developing a, a taste for craft beer which was just a few years before I discovered I was insulin resistant so uh, I don't have much of a history with beer um, back to the issue of well are we overusing or abusing or incorrectly using the term uh, food addiction Again, I'm not a mental health person. I'm not here to debate that. I expect to get a lot of hater comments on it and several other types of comments as well. Um, those of us who have a, that kind of history with food, um, many of us tend to use the term food addiction. This is an Overeaters Anonymous. Uh, many of you didn't know that even existed. Uh, compulsive eating, over-exercising. Well, yeah, I could be accused of probably both of those. Never anorexia or bulimia, bulimia or purging. And actually, I was not aware of anyone in my uh, immediate or extended family who, who had those problems. But food addiction and binging, oh, yeah, no question. Now, <clears throat> I did go from 180-something pounds back down to 150, and at one time a little bit lower than that. How did I do that? Now, remember, this was in the late 70s. So the thing then, the best science was low fat. You know, a fat was deposited in the arteries and fat was uh, bad for you. So you, uh, you got that from eating fat, we thought. So I went low fat, 
plant-based mostly, travel and restaurants were a big deal, especially as I became an adult, because uh, this maintaining um, body weight for the next, well, for the rest of my life is, has been a challenge. In fact, most of the day, most days, I have to struggle with uh, wanting to eat something. I want to eat something right now. Um, so I had to set some rules about um, travel and, and restaurants. No entrees. When I, I traveled a lot. So if I did not have very strict rules when I was traveling and eating at restaurants, I would, get, I would start gaining weight very fast. And uh, I noticed that very quickly. So the, my travel and restaurant rules were the same. No entrees except for large salads. No fats except for fish. No meats. No pastas. Um, small desserts were okay, and I just drove people crazy. I'd see that they have something, a really good pasta or a really nice meat dish, and I just want a tiny bite, and I get a lot of grief for that. Um, I wasn't the greatest uh, person, uh, person to enjoy uh, a night in the restaurant with. I never had problems with beer, so that wasn't an issue for me. Occasional wine, I really didn't uh, enjoy it that much. Did a lot of running, uh, long, slow distance. Again, we're talking about the 70s up until just uh, a couple of decades ago when we began to, sco to discover that high intensity intervals and um, resistance training were a much bigger deal than we thought, especially for cardiovascular inflammation, insulin resistance, and some of the things that we're seeing are huge issues for baby boomers that we just didn't realize 30 years ago. I did some resistance training, but not a lot. The um, there's an interesting comparison between the conversations and the emotional attachments around food. Uh, comparison of my family of origin versus my current family. Um, I've shared in other videos that uh, Janice, my wife, um, came from a family that didn't have problems with food. In fact, uh, they were very different uh, in that perspective. And in fact, one time in our, early in our marriage, when I was at Hopkins, I noticed that a couple of them had webbed, slight webbing of the fingers. It was um, three girls, the mother and the father. Um, the mother and all three girls had mitral valve prolapse. Um, all the, the mother and all three girls were tall and thin, uh, almost marfanoid looking was what began to hit me almost marfan, tall and thin. All of them have mitral valve. A couple of them even have a little bit of webbing. And sure enough, I suggested that Janice go see um, the genetics clinic uh, there at Hopkins. And sure enough, um, Victor McCusick, uh, the father of genetics in the last generation, old school, um, actually canceled his uh, scheduled uh, presentation in the um, the large oak filled amphitheater for Grand Rounds at Hopkins that day and brought Janice and her mother to show examples of sticklers. Um, so again, uh, with connective tissue diseases like uh, sticklers, which is a Marfanoid disease, and Marfans, you tend to be thin and there are reasons why. Uh, we, don't un we don't understand all the reasons why, but they tend to be thin. I can tell you from living with a family like that, here's some interesting comparisons. Now, you look 60, 40 to 60 years ago when uh, I was with my family of origin versus uh, 20 years ago to current when I'm with uh, living with um, three tall, thin folks, my uh, wife and two kids. Uh, my family of origin, all of us struggled with being overweight. This family struggles with being underweight and not eating enough. Um, it was physical and behavioral both with, my fa with both families. My family of origin was very positive about food. Um, current family often needs to be coaxed to eat. Um, they, my family of origin, again, would go hog wild at buffets and loved sweets like blackberry cobbler. Uh, when, during blackberry season, we'd all go out and pick blackberries and make a pie with it, a cobbler, which is just full of sugar and, and pastry. Um, 
the Derrickson family that I married into is just not that much into sweets. So again, a lot of um, interesting perspectives on food. And yeah, this is not a, uh, I read off some of the American Psychiatric Association's <clears throat> perspectives on uh, the term addiction. And it's clear they do not list food as an addiction. Um, so again, please don't take that as science. This is just a story of origin. This is a story about where I come from as a person um, and the uh, psychological and physical uh, conversations I've had around food. Thank you for your interest. Have a two-day event in uh, Louisville, November 8th and 9th. Get your CIMT and all of your labs.